Hi everybody, this is Kefran, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Escape from Tarkov uh, for the new wipe. I think my last guide was from a year ago, something like that. So we're going to start by optimizing Windows. And after that, we're going to take a look on your Radeon and NVIDIA parameter. And at the end, we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture. Capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode honestly is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for the NVIDIA cards, first of all, make sure that you have the latest uh, driver from NVIDIA. So do your update. Make sure also that you update your NVIDIA app. Normally, you can see a restart if you didn't or you can just restart your app over there and it will work. In the graphics section, go to Escape from Tarkov. The first thing that you want to do, it's your DLSS. You want to force the latest version of it. So DLSS 4 in the latest one. So normally you click on it. You will go here. Normally by default, it will be at use default. You select latest and you apply. Right now I can do it because it's already apply. And you will see that use different setting for each DLSS technology. So each time that NVIDIA will update their model, it will uh, push the latest one automatically to Escape from Tarkov. So you don't want to wait on the developer to update their uh, DLSS version. So this is a good thing to do. In the global setting, what I recommend normally is low latency mode. Make sure this one is at on. I, I'm using G-Sync uh, on my uh, monitor. And uh, the, the really important thing, you need to stay in your G-Sync range. So for an example, me, I have a 240 hertz monitor. I'm locking my FPS at 200, 237 to make sure that I'm always in my G-Sync range. So if you have a 144 hertz monitor, lock your FPS at 141. One thing I also recommend is your shader cache size. Uh, by default, I think NVIDIA is using 5 gig. So use something like 10 or even 100 gig if you have the space on your drive. If you install a lot of different games, sometimes that ca can cause an issue. You don't have space anymore for your shader cache size. So you need to rebuild your cache and uh, clear your cache folder. And sometimes it's causing stuttering and stuff like that. So go a little bit higher with this one. Now let's go to system. So if you want to use your G-Sync for sure, activate it. I'm using it on with full screen and window mode on my second monitor. That, that is currently my main. And also really important on your monitor, you need to activate your G-Sync straight up like uh, on your monitor, not necessarily, not just on the NVIDIA app. In display properties, I recommend to go with native for your resolution and very important. And also use your maximum refresh rate. I know a lot of people is buying an high refresh rate monitor and by default windows put them at 60 and they think they're using an high refresh rate. So super important to change that. 
In the uh, color section, first of all, if you have uh, a monitor that is compatible with 10-bit color, definitely go with 10-bit and use your full dynamic range. And uh, one more thing, I like to put my digital vibrance at 55. By default, it's 50. It will add a, a little bit more like uh, pop-in colors and stuff like that. It's, it's good for game who looks very gray, uh, like on Showdown, Escape from Tarkov. This can help to see your enemies. One more thing in the performance section, I like to put the power maximum at 133. So this is the maximum. By default, it's 100. So it's going to like just send more juice to your uh, GPU. But um, it really de depends on your uh, thermals on your GPU, if you have the space or not. The algorithm from NVIDIA will use the power maximum to push a little bit more wattage to your card. And you will get a longer boost clock because of this. So you can expect 5 to 7% boost. Uh, in your FPS with that. But again, you need the thermal space. It really depends on the algorithm. So it depends also on your case, on your ambient. Uh, if it's 37 degrees in your room, probably it will not work. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Now let's go to Radeon. This is pretty much it for the NVIDIA fan reader. Now let's go to the Radeon one. So now for Radeon card, we're going to go to settings, display first. Make sure that you're using your FreeSync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile. So don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, Fluent Motion Frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game. But this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use Anti-Lag 1, this one is not good. Don't use a Radiant Boost. Radiant Chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed. And you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't 
go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of per person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game, so first of all, uh, automatic RAM cleaner, it's not useful anymore, so don't check it. Uh, only use physical core. This one I recommend to check this one if, uh, if if you have more than four physical cores. So if you have a Ryzen processor, you will probably have that. Also all the latest uh, uh, Intel processor for the past like four or five years, uh, you should be able to use the physical core. It will boost your FPS. If you don't know how many cores that you have, just like Google your CPU and you will see it. For sure if you have like an old core 2.0 or something like that, don't check this one. For FUV, I'm using 63. Uh, again, FOV is a question of preference, but if you have more FOV, uh, you're gonna like sometimes lose FPS, sometimes you're getting some random drop. FOV is a bit tricky in this game. So me, I like to play like 63. I know some people like to play like 59 and some people also just boost their FOV at maximum. So question of preference over there. Add bobbing, I recommend to go with minimum, less distraction when you're playing the game. Now let's go to the graphics section. So screen resolution, go with native. So depending on your monitor, in my case, it's 1440p. Screen mode, I really recommend to go with full screen, less stuttering, better in FPS. Aspect ratio, again, just play native, your proper monitor. If you're using um, the low latency from NVIDIA, the VSync will be unchecked over there. And honestly, I'm not a fan of VSync. Don't use that. It will add input lag in your game. Use free sync if you have a radiant car or G-Sync, depending on, like, on your monitor and your GPU, if you don't want to see tearing when you're playing. After that, texture quality, if you have more than 6 gig of RAM, VRAM, go with high. 4 gig medium, less than 4 gig, go with low. Shadow quality, I really recommend to go with low with this one. You can expect 10% boost and also better visibility to see enemy. Object LOD quality, I like to play at 2.5s, less pop-ins. It's a little bit better. If you're struggling with the game and you're, you need FPS, definitely go with 2. But I feel like 2.5 is a good balance between uh, visibility, uh, image quality, and also your FPS. Overall visibility, I like to play at uh, 1,500 or 2,000, but this one will tank your FPS. It's like 3% for each bracket. So if you're struggling with your FPS, start at 1,000 and look at your FPS. It's your, the, the good balance is 1,500, but if you have a decent computer, go with 2,000. So definitely do te some testing with this one. Cloud quality, this one I'm putting it at high. I didn't see any uh, difference in my FPS on my 4090 and on my Radeon 9070 XT, but... I did some testing on another computer on my 2070 with an old CPU and I was losing like 3 to 4% in my FPS. So do some testing, just look at the sky and also look at the map when you see a little bit of the sky, if you see a difference in your FPS. But uh, I, I think for the like modern computer, you will not have any issue with this one. After that, the LSS, uh, the LSS, honestly, I recommend quality for 1080p and 1440p. If you have a 4K monitor, balance can be good also. Uh, balance in 1440p and 1080p, I feel it's a little bit too blurry for me. The press preset doesn't matter because we're, we're forcing it with the NVIDIA app. And the LSS4 in this game is really good, so I really recommend to use it. I'm not a fan of TAA, FXAA in this game. It's pretty trash, the anti-aliasing, so definitely use the upscaling over there. If you have a Radiant car, I recommend to go with FSR 3.0. I recommend only quality. It's less good than the DLSS, so depend even if you're playing at like 4K, just go with quality with this one, because it's a little bit uh, blurry uh, FSR 3. After that, ambient inclusion SSR go with off for both. You can expect 8% boost in your FPS. Anisotropic filtering go with on. A little bit better visibility and no impact on your FPS. If you have the NVIDIA Reflect, go with on. Sharpness, it really depends on um, if your game looks blurry, go higher. If it looks too much like an Instagram filter, go lower. And for sure, you're going to need to adapt it when you're using DLSS or FSR. I like to play at 0.6. Lobby FPS, I just go with 60 and just unlock my FPS and it's locked with my NVIDIA app. So I'm locking it at 237. Um, so again, just a comment over there. If you're struggling with your thermal, for example, you have a 60 Hertz monitor because you're playing on your laptop and your laptop is, 
has some internal issues sometimes just lock your fps at 60 it will be better you're not getting some random drop because uh, um, your um, your cpu or your gpu are struggling so just a comment over here so for the rest it's pretty much it I like to play with high quality color and uh, not much impact on my FPS. I saw something like one to 2%. Again, to a modern PC, if you're playing on an older computer, look at uh, your game when you're changing it. I saw a couple of benchmark on uh, the internet. Some people are playing with the uh, old uh, GPU, like a 10, a 1060, 1070, and uh, they're losing like five to 6% in your FPS. So just take a look on that. Anyway, you can use post effect. You can boost your digital uh, vibrance if you want a little bit uh, better visibility and color, but I like to play with my high quality color at on. Everything else on check. If you're struggling with Street of Tarkov, definitely test the lower uh, texture resolution mode. It can help uh, if you're not struggling, but just stay like that. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my uh, Escape from Tarkov guide. I hope you're going to have a nice wipe. And uh, if you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.